Hey, I'm Jesse. Let's have a devotion. We're in 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 11. He has just talked about how Demas has deserted him. Crescens has gone to Galatia, Titus to Dalmatia. We're going to learn more about Titus. That's the next book we study. But he says this about Luke. Only Luke is with me. Now what's significant about Luke being named one verse after Demas is that in Colossians 4.14, we saw that Luke and, and Demas were with Paul when he wrote to Colossae. But now Demas has not only abandoned Paul, but also abandoned Luke as well. Luke is with me. Only Luke is with me. Bring Mark with you, Paul writes to Timothy, for he is useful to me in the ministry. It sounds like a brief logistical detail. It sounds like a quick little shout out. Hey, by the way, tell Mark to come on. Like I've got the, the good physician Luke with me, but uh, if you could bring Mark, that would be great. Thanks. Okay. Bye. XOXO. Love Paul. Like, there's more to this than that. There's actually a deep history here. This guy, Mark, is someone that we saw in Acts. And he and Paul had a parting of ways. We've seen Demas, who has abandoned Paul. And it's not because he's going a different route, not because they've had a theological dispute, not because he's planting a church somewhere else, but because Demas just straight up loved the world. And he got caught up in, he got caught up in meaningless, earthly perhaps sinful stuff. And now <clears throat> Demas has parted ways with Paul, but there's this guy, Mark, John Mark, as he's known, uh, is now Paul's calling for him in his final letter here at the end of his life. He's reconciled with John Mark. Here's what happened in Acts chapter 15, beginning in verse 36. After some time had passed, Paul said to Barnabas, let's go back and visit the brothers and sisters in every town where we have preached the word of the Lord and see how they're doing. Barnabas wanted to take along John Mark, but Paul insisted that they should not take along this man who had deserted them in Pamphylia and had not gone on with them to the work. They had such a sharp disagreement that they parted company. And Paul and, Paul, uh, uh, and Barnabas took Mark with him and sailed off to Cyprus. But Paul chose Silas and departed after being commended by the brothers and sisters to the grace of the Lord. He traveled through Syria and Cilicia, strengthening the churches. So John Mark evidently had refused to go somewhere with Paul and Barnabas in the past. Barnabas wanted John Mark to come along with him. And then Paul said, no, that dude ditched us when we needed him the most. I'm not bringing him with us. And then Barnabas, I mean, that's a big deal for them to park company. Like he's, his, 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 his real name, by the way, is not even Barnabas. <laughs> like Barnabas is his nickname. It means son of encouragement, bar Nabus. But Barnabas wanted to take along John Mark and Paul insisted they should not take him along because when they were in Pamphylia, John Mark wouldn't go there. And so they had a sharp disagreement and Barnabas and John Mark ended up going their own way off to Cyprus. And then so then uh, Paul takes Silas instead. And then as a result, God doubles the ministry teams. Paul and Silas go on to encourage the churches here. And then Barnabas and John Mark go off to Cyprus. And as a result, man, their reach is spread. God would use this division to actually double the reach of the ministry team. And now here, according to Paul's final letter, maybe not final canonically, but final chronologically, the final letter that he ever wrote in his life as recorded in scripture, he's asking for Mark. He's asking to meet with him again. There's more to this than just like a brief shout out on a logistical point. There's reconciliation among brothers and sisters in Christ. If you and I have had a falling out, would you forgive me? Would you forgive me? All right, if, if we've had a falling out and I haven't reached, and I, if, if you know uh, you and I have had a falling out and, and we haven't spoken about it, then evidently it's because I've forgotten about it. Because I reach out to the people that I've, that I've offended. If I know that I've wronged you, I'll confess it and I'll do what I can to, to if my apology doesn't hurt you, I'll apologize. There's nothing, I, I don't think that apologies are nearly as a big of a deal as forgiveness is. But if you and I have had a falling out and we haven't spoken about it, evidently I don't know that I've wronged you. So please forgive me. Please forgive me and let's reconcile. Now you likewise, Christian, if you're tuning in, if you've got people that you've had a falling out with and they're Christians, would you reconcile? Would you make peace? Make peace. As far as it depends upon you, be at peace with everyone. Which means that it's not always dependent upon you. Sometimes you can't help it. There's some people who are just going to hate your stupid guts no matter what you do. So just move on. That doesn't depend upon you. You can't make them like you. You can't make them forgive you. That's, on, that's between them and God. But as far as you are concerned, 
be at peace with everyone. And that largely entails forgiving the people who have wronged you. Sure, I mean, make recompense and make right, set things in order, apologize where necessary. Um, by the way, if you're really hung up on, on an apology and you're waiting on an apology, you're probably never going to get it because the person that has wronged you that you think needs to come apologize to you probably has no stinking clue. Isn't that the way it goes? The person that like you're really angry at is off on a cruise somewhere and is happy as could be eating from the Guy Fieri branded burger joint that's on the Lido deck and he's happy as can be. He has no clue that he's like ruined your life. That's the way it goes, man. The devil does that to us. So like, don't be all hung up on an apology. Because it could be that the person that has the person that has wronged you doesn't realize they've wronged you. They may have done it inadvertently. So don't be don't be hung up like, excuse me, I'm waiting on an apology. I'm waiting. On, I'm trying to be at peace with everyone, but these idiots aren't apologizing to me. That's not the way it works. You forgive, and that's how peace is made. You apologize, but you don't expect apologies, and you don't bank too much on apologies either. By the way, there's nothing really biblical. There's not really a clear biblical mandate for you, uh, for you that you are due an apology, and people have to come apologize to you. No, we all have to apologize to God for our sin. We have to confess our sin before God. Rather, peace is made largely through forgiveness, where the aggrieved party forgives. That's where peace is made. That's how reconciliation happens. And by the way, do not, R.T. Kendall in his book, Total Forgiveness, writes this, don't re reach out to somebody and say, I forgive you, because it'll actually cause trouble. I've been, I've, there was, <laughs> somebody sent me that text message one, uh, in college years ago, and I was like, forgive, you forgive me. I haven't, seen you in months. What are you talking about? <laughs> like, I, and it, it actually, I was actually all chapped about it, which is so funny because like, I've never been anything but nice to you, idiot. <laughs> and like, and it caused up dissension and it was supposed to make peace. Don't do that. Okay. Don't, don't say some, listen, I forgive you because <laughs> the, they're going to rack their brain. They're going to think about it. And it's going to hurt your heart more because they're like, good grief. This guy doesn't even realize that he's hurt me. Like this, this woman doesn't even realize that she wounded me. They have no clue about it. So don't, don't do that. <laughs> Instead, in your heart, forgive the people who have wronged you and you move on, make peace, reconcile with people. That doesn't mean that you got to now go on vacations together. You can forgive somebody and, and not have lunch tomorrow. That's fine. That's okay. But forgiveness has to be true forgiveness. And reconciliation does mean that you'd be willing to do ministry with them again. That was the case with Paul. And that was the case with Paul and John Mark and evidently Paul and Barnabas too. Man, it stinks how many people in these closing chapters are getting call-outs for the wrong reason. I mean, it, it really, really stinks because in his, in his final days, Paul feels abandoned. And uh, Demas is, is one of them. But at least in the case of John Mark, there's reconciliation. He has been useful to Paul in ministry. See, I told you, there's more to this than just a brief call-out.